Hello everyone to lecture 48. So let's go back to our consultation. Remember Shabab, we had an issue with the conversion that it was low, as low as 40% and we wanted to increase it, right? And we figured out that the conversion is limited thermodynamically, meaning that's the maximum achievable conversion because that is the equilibrium conversion. So we said let's solve the root of this issue uh, by suggesting a few things. So we said first we could change the reactor type, operation mode, adding heat exchanger to the reactor and then here we suggested having the interstage cooling or interstage heating and the final thing is changing the feed temperature. For example, if you have an exothermic reaction and uh, this the setup leads to thermodynamically limited conversion then simply we could reduce the feed temperature because that would reduce the temperature inside the reactor and therefore the equilibrium will be shifted forward allowing for higher equilibrium conversion which means you could achieve higher conversion okay but the problem is if I reduce the temperature this will reduce the reaction rate as well which could lead to lower conversion so what's the solution high temperature is bad low temperature is bad therefore we need to find and operate at the optimum feed temperature so this is the topic of today so let's talk about optimum feed temperature consider an adiabatic reactor of fixed volume or catalyst weight so now we're going to talk about an existing reactor with a given volume or given catalyst weight investigate what happens to the conversion and equilibrium conversion as the feed temperature T0 is varied for a reversible exothermic reaction. Let's take an example A goes to B and let's take actually this is the same example that we've been talking about earlier where you don't have B in the feed and Cp equals uh, CPA equals CPB and so on. Okay, so from for this example, you have an equation for Xe as a function of Kc, which is a function of temperature, and we know how to plot this curve. As you remember, this is a Xe curve where we are plotting X versus T. Come on, what else we can plot? Well, we can plot Xeb, conversion from the energy balance right and for again for this simple case we have this simple linear equation straight line equation okay good so this is xeb and it is straight line as you can see here come on this is one this is the other one this is the third one the difference between all these lines as you can see visually it's not the slope it's the intersection with the x axis. So where x equals to zero. You know when x equals to zero, this means the temperature equals the feed temperature in this case. So that means here the feed temperature is 350 as you can see. And then here the feed temperature is 500 and here the feed temperature is 600. So we have different values for the feed temperature okay good so let's discuss what we have here so let's start with uh, the reactor operating at or let's operate the reactor with t naught of 600 come on 600 so t naught one is 600 okay and as you can see as you can see this will lead to a very low 
adiabatic equilibrium conversion only 15 percent so apparently operating at t naught 600 is very bad because the adiabatic equilibrium conversion is very low which means i cannot go beyond 15 percent so what do we do let's reduce the feed temperature to 500 okay so now we're operating at with t naught 500 as you can see here now the adiabatic equilibrium conversion is a bit higher around i don't know maybe 34 35 or percent something like that 37 maybe okay so we were able to have in this case higher adiabatic equilibrium conversion which is good okay let's reduce it more let's reduce it to 350 kelvin to the t naught to 350 you can see that now the adiabatic equilibrium conversion is increased all the way up to 75 percent so sounds good right so as we decrease the feed temperature the feed and the temperature inside the reactor decreases as well this will shift the equilibrium forward because we have a reversible exothermic reaction and then the adiabatic equilibrium or the achievable adiabatic equilibrium conversion will be higher okay good let's look at it from a different angle of view now different point of view okay now let's look at it from the kinetic point of view you know for the first time the first slide we look at it from the thermodynamic point of view now let's look at it at the, from the kinetic point of view okay so let's just from the previous uh, discussion we said well uh, t naught 350 is very good right very good so let's do that let's operate with t naught 350 uh, let's see what happens we are plotting x versus w so that means i need to know the rate i need to use the design equation okay so now this is from the kinetic point of view when i operate at this very low feed temperature the rate of reaction is very low because the temperature inside the reactor is low so as you can see the conversion progresses however slowly right slowly and by the time by the time we reach the exit of the reactor um, we have only achieved very small conversion only five percent conversion why is that because the rate of reaction was very slow because the temperature inside the reactor was very low because the feed temperature was very low so we achieved only five percent conversion although although if you recall at 350 at 350 kelvin feet temperature the adiabatic equilibrium conversion was 75 percent this is the maximum that i can achieve if the reactor was very large right but for this given volume of reactor i'll achieve only five percent so that means low temperature is bad so let's go to high temperature let's go to 600 t naught 600 kelvin okay very high temperature for the feed that means very high temperature inside the reactor which means very high rate of reaction and as you can see the rate at which x is increasing is very fast compared to the earlier case where x was increasing very slowly so now you can see that x is increasing rapidly inside the reactor but what the problem oops it hits the equilibrium conversion it hits the equilibrium conversion as you can see when we go down the length of the reactor when we go down the length of the reactor it's an adiabatic exothermic reaction heat is released from the reaction the 
this heat is not leaving the reactor, stays inside, the temperature inside the reactor increases. And this will shift the equilibrium backward, which means it will reduce the equilibrium conversion. So as we go down the length of the reactor, X is increasing rapidly. However, Xe is decreasing rapidly as well. Okay, so what's happening? Well, eventually they will meet. And once they meet, you cannot go beyond this conversion. You cannot go beyond this conversion because you have reached the equilibrium conversion. Now the rate is zero. So no further reaction. And it will stop. Okay, so apparently very high temperature, feed temperature is also bad because I'll be limited now thermodynamically. Okay, in the case where the feed temperature was 350, the conversion was limited kinetically because the rate was slow. In the case where the feed temperature is very high, the achieved conversion is still low, 15% only. But this 15% is limited thermodynamically because the equilibrium conversion now is only 15% when I operate at 600 Kelvin at the feet. You can see this here. 600. The conversion is, adiabatic conversion is only 15%. Okay, so what do you suggest? So let's choose a temperature in between 350 and 600 Kelvin. That is 500k. So in 500k now I'm doing a balance between thermodynamics and kinetic. As you can see when I reduce the temperature from 600 to 500 the rate of the X increase has dropped a bit which means the rate of reaction has dropped obviously because the temperature is lower. But it's still not that low compared to the case where we have T naught 350, right? So X again continues increasing and XE on the other hand continues decreasing تمام? until they meet. تمام? So here we have 38%. So the conversion has reached the adiabatic equilibrium conversion, which is here. See, this is a 38%. Tamam. However, this conversion which was achieved is much higher than the 5% conversion which was limited kinetically um, and still much higher than 15% which is limited thermodynamically. But still, of course, this conversion is limited thermodynamically as you can see because it has reached the adiabatic equilibrium conversion. Okay, so good. So now we optimized the process by optimizing the feed temperature to maximize the conversion. But the question is, is there any way to further increase the conversion? Yes, of course. As, as you can see here, they met, I mean conversion and equilibrium conversion, met before the end of the reactor. So still we have a portion of the catalyst that was not utilized. So that means we can lower the temperature below 500 Kelvin. And this will allow me to have higher equilibrium, adiabatic equilibrium conversion. And still I have some more catalyst to carry the reaction okay so the optimum actually can be fine-tuned it's not only 500 kelvin it can be fine-tuned so it would be less than that which will give me higher equilibrium uh, higher conversion okay so as t naught is increased k will increase right remember we started from 350 Kelvin and we said, okay, let's go higher. So as T naught is increased, K will increase as well as conversion. 
x will continue to increase with increasing t naught until x e is approached. خلاص, until we reach the adiabatic equilibrium conversion. Further increase in t naught for this exothermic reaction will only decrease the conversion due to the decreasing x e. This optimum t naught is shown here. So we can plot actually t naught okay, versus x at the exit of the reactor. And as we said, we can further optimize it by reducing, trying T not lower than 500. Okay. طيب. So let's go to example 8.3. And let's find the optimum feed temperature. This is the first example where we designed the CCR and plaque flow reactor. So for the isomerization of N-butane reaction, normal butane goes to isobutane. What is the optimum feed temperature that leads to the highest conversion in a 2.6 cubic meter plug flow reactor? Again, Shabab, the volume of the reactor is fixed. Okay, so we have our, our reactor exists and its volume is 2.6 cubic meter. So now I want to optimize the feed temperature. Okay, so what do I do? Well, I'll need to solve this problem over and over every time i change t naught that's the only thing which i will change and then after changing the t naught we will measure x or we'll record x at the exit and we will plot this figure so now we have x exit versus t naught x at the exit of the reactor and temperature at the inlet of the reactor Okay, and we get this plot. And obviously, we do have an optimum feed temperature. Okay, so the optimum feed temperature is 333 Kelvin. And when the feed temperature is this much, the exit conditions are, you have the T will be 364 Kelvin, of course, higher than T naught because the reaction is exothermic and operated adiabatically and the x at the exit is around 71 percent so you could see that we have an optimum feed temperature okay so let's go back to the original case example 8 3 when the feed temperature was 330 we got actually a conversion that is slightly below 70 percent and with the optimum feed temperature which is 333 Kelvin, so only 3 degrees higher. You can see that we get a conversion that's slightly more than 70%. So what does that mean? That means the reactor was already optimized. The feed temperature in the original case was already optimized for a case where the volume is 2.6 cubic meter time okay what is limiting the conversion in either sides of the x max so this is the x max right tamam that's maximum what's limiting the conversion in the side and in the side why when i operate with t naught between 300 and let's say 320 why the conversion is small and the same thing when i operate the reactor with t naught somewhere between 600 and 700 kelvin why the conversion is small why it's not going higher so what's limiting the conversion either side of x max well in order to answer this question it will be very useful if we plot x e as well tamam so let's plot x e Okay, so you can see now that obviously the conversion is limited thermodynamically when it comes to high feed temperature. And obviously when it comes to low feed temperature, low feed temperature, you can see the big gap between the achieved conversion and the maximum achievable conversion, which is the equilibrium conversion again shabab here x is the conversion at the exit and xe is calculated based on the exit 
temperature so that's xe based on the temperature at the exit tamam so you can see that at the exit the achieved conversion is way below the equilibrium conversion tamam so that means the conversion is limited kinetically i'm achieving only small conversion because the rate of reaction is very slow so the kinetics is limiting the conversion not thermodynamics thermodynamics tells me that oh you can go up to 80 percent conversion but you are not reaching there you are only getting less than 10 percent conversion because your reaction rate is slow because the operating temperature is low inside the reactor because your feed temperature is low okay how does the conversion varies along the reactor for the optimum t naught case well let's see let's plot x versus v once we say v that means i need the design equation which is based on the rate of reaction so i'm going to use the design equation i'm going to take into consideration the rate of reaction to plot this figure so here this is for this volume of reactor 2.6 cubic meter with an optimum t naught which is 333 kelvin and you can see as we go down the length of the reactor conversion increases because the reaction is progressing however xe xe is decreasing because as we go down the length of the reactor the temperature increases therefore the equilibrium conversion decreases because the equilibrium is shifted backward for this exothermic reversible reaction tamam and you can see that they meet right at the exit tamam they don't meet before the exit that wouldn't be optimum that will leave some catalyst unused and will limit or reduce for you the uh, maximum achievable conversion if they don't meet af af after the exit which would mean that the kinetic is very slow now they meet right at the exit okay and again shabab x here is the it's different than the one previously discussed so this is different this x here is the local conversion it's the local conversion so if we are here tamam. so this is the x at that location of the reactor and this is the xe at that location tamam, of the reactor which is calculated based on that temperature at this location okay which equations were used to plot these two curves you know it already we have used the design equation to plot the x versus v and then we use the kc expression equation to plot xe so we have now xe as a function of t at that location tamam. how do you define the temperature at that location well we use the energy balance Type. exercises on adiabatic temperature adiabatic equilibrium temperature optimum feed temperature x and xe For the adiabatic isomerization of n-butane, which is n-butane goes to normal butane goes to isobutane, in a 2.6 cubic meter plug flow reactor, let's plot the equilibrium conversion as a function of temperature. So there we go. This is how it looks like. Tamam. Equilibrium conversion decreases as temperature increases. This is because the reaction is exothermic reversible reaction. Type. Again, you know where this equation is coming from. Okay, let's zoom in. Okay. Tamam. Next, on the same figure, show the effect of X on the adiabatic temperature for different T naught. So let's see what happens to the adiabatic temperature as meaning the temperature inside the reactor. Okay when the reactor is operated adiabatically as a 
result of x increasing and we'll do this for different t naught well that means we need to go back to the energy balance equation okay and from the energy balance equation here so this is energy balance equation we know that when x is 0 t equals 2 t naught so we choose actually three t naughts t naught 275 which is this so you can see when you start low v temperature thermo you get high adiabatic equilibrium conversion all of these are the adiabatic equilibrium conversion and these temperature are the corresponding adiabatic equilibrium temperature so anyway as we go down the length of the reactor so let's walk down the length of the reactor let's choose this t naught 333 as we go down the length of the reactor as the reaction progresses yani as x increases the temperature inside the reactor increases as well okay let's zoom in and use closer values of t naught so now we have t naught 300 333 350 okay and let's use thermodynamics and kinetics to obtain all of the above for the three chosen t naught so we want all of the above the adiabatic temperature adiabatic equilibrium temperature adiabatic equilibrium conversion and take into consideration the optimum t naught and let's find x and x e okay so let's start with thermodynamics from thermodynamics for these three different feed temperature we can calculate the adiabatic equilibrium conversion and the corresponding adiabatic equilibrium temperature correct okay and we know that these are the points that's from thermodynamics let's go to kinetics with the help of thermodynamics of course tamam and let's figure out what the conversion and the equilibrium conversion are inside this reactor and also at the exit so at t naught 300 that's the low t naught temperature you can see that the x is increasing at a slow pace tamam and in fact it exits the reactor with only seven percent conversion on the other hand the equilibrium conversion starts high and only slightly decrease why slightly decrease because the temperature is slightly increasing inside the reactor why slightly because the conversion has increased only little bit from zero to seven percent why because the temperature is, is low you know t naught is only 300 kelvin therefore the temperature inside the reactor is slightly higher and the rate of reaction is slow so the reaction mixture leaves the reactor leaves the reactor with only seven percent conversion although at that position at that position the equilibrium conversion is 80 percent let's go to the case with the high t naught 350 so as you can see that pace at which x increases is very high it's very high okay you can see tamam and it reaches the adiabatic equilibrium conversion early into the reactor early into the reactor and you can see that equilibrium conversion has is decreasing as we go down the length of the reactor until these two both meet the conversion meet the equilibrium conversion where the reaction stops so here we have the x equals xe and they equal 16r however in the optimum case they don't meet until you reach the exit the optimum temperature is lower than 350 okay so the, the pace at which x increases is lower but this will help me actually because the temperature is lower than 350 so that means that equilibrium conversion is higher tamam okay so both i mean equilibrium conversion start to decrease as we go down the length of the reactor because the temperature is increasing xe continues increasing as the reaction progresses until they meet at the exit and conversion equals the equilibrium conversion at the exit 
which is 71%, and it equals actually the adiabatic equilibrium conversion. Okay, good. So let's summarize all of this in a table. Okay, so these were the, the left figures here, were based on the design equation and energy balance and case expression as well. So we're using kinetic and thermal energy as well. And this figure on the right here, this figure is based on thermodynamics only. And as we explained, these points reflect the adiabatic equilibrium conversion and the corresponding adiabatic equilibrium temperature. Okay. So these points are the adiabatic equilibrium conversion. This is this is the achieved conversion. This is the maximum achieved conversion, or let's say the maximum achievable conversion if the reactor was large enough for equilibrium to be reached. If, if of course the reactor was operated adiabatically. Time. Let's look at the table again. Okay, so here the table we have two segments. We have on the first segment we're talking about using thermodynamics and kinetic together, and the second segment we're using only thermodynamics. So for this feed temperature, we can tell that the adiabatic, we're using only thermodynamics. The adiabatic equilibrium temperature and the adiabatic equilibrium conversion is found from thermodynamics only here and you can see it is 332.7 kelvin and the adiabatic equilibrium conversion is 0.75 let's look at the case where we use the design equation when t was 300 t naught was 300 kelvin the t at the exit was only 303 and the conversion was only 7%. Actually, the temperature only increased from 300 to 303 because the conversion increased only by a little bit. However, at the exit, let's see, at the exit here, at the exit, where the conversion was only 7%, the equilibrium conversion is 80%. So this 80% is the equilibrium conversion at the exit. It's not the adiabatic equilibrium conversion. The adiabatic equilibrium conversion is lower. It's 75%. That's it, which represents the maximum achievable conversion if the reactor was long enough or large enough to reach equilibrium when it's operated adiabatically. So, because as we go down the length of the reactor, the temperature increases. Therefore, the equilibrium conversion decreases. Okay, so I hope now it's clear for you the difference between equilibrium conversion at that location and the adiabatic equilibrium conversion. Okay, let's go to the optimum feed temperature. Let's go to the optimum feed temperature. And here, the T at the exit is 364 Kelvin. And the conversion at the exit is 71%. That's the conversion at the exit, 71%, which equals the conversion, equilibrium conversion at the exit. So we're talking about here, which equals the equilibrium conversion at the exit. And guess what? It's also equal, it also equals the adiabatic equilibrium conversion, which we found here from thermodynamics. Do you see here? Come on. The adiabatic equilibrium conversion is 71%. So they are all equal, of course. The temperatures are equal as well. So that means we have reached to the adiabatic equilibrium conversion. If you could do this, then with a minimum increase in feed temperature, then this is the best. Okay, again, a higher temperature, of course, the same. Now the exit, uh, the conversion at the exit equals the equilibrium conversion at the exit, which are equal to the adiabatic equilibrium conversion. However, it's slightly lower. It's slightly lower. Let me use another pen. It's slightly lower compared to the conversion at the exit of the reactor 
or the adiabatic equilibrium conversion, they're both the same, when we were operating at optimum feed temperature because the optimum feed temperature is lower. Therefore, I will maintain higher equilibrium conversion. Okay, so this summarizes all that discussion which were related to optimum feed temperature and, and beyond which includes adiabatic temperature, adiabatic equilibrium temperature, adiabatic equilibrium conversion, and conversion and equilibrium conversion. Okay, I hope you had a good thought about all of this and you understood it and you will give it more thought in your spare time to digest all of this. See you soon in segment two.